hello friends i will be taking up unit 10 of bank financial management uh, in three parts the topic is risk regulations in banking industry now why did the need for risk regulations arise why are risk regulations needed you need risk regulations for smooth functioning of banks smooth functioning of economy you need proper risk management because you need good risk management practices so if you have proper risk management that will inspire you to have good risk management practices that it also stimulates the development enhancement of your internal risk models your risk management processes it promotes better definition of risks you are in a position to define your risk properly then you are in a position to create incentives for developing better methodologies for measuring risks if you are able to contain your risk properly manage your risk properly you are incentivized now we come to the objectives the goals of risk regulations now risk regulations are important because safety of banks improves if you have your capital in line with the risks you are taking then it's important because you need a level playing field for all the banks you set common benchmarks and they help in the level playing field for all the banks then your sound business and supervisory practices they can be promoted when you have proper risk regulations you will be in a position to control and monitor your systemic risk protect interests of depositors with the help of risk regulations now we just talked about systemic risk systemic risk means the risk of failure of the entire banking system the collapse of the banking system because you see all the banks their transactions their relations there is a high interrelation between all the banks the transactions which they are undertaking between themselves among themselves that's why it's very important that we have proper risk management practices we don't want the entire banking system to collapse now this basel committee of banking supervision this was formed under the bank of international settlements and this happened after the bank hastet frankfurt it collapsed that was some time back about a decade back and since this particular bank it was having transactions with so many banks globally all the banks were impacted so bank of international settlements came out with this committee and the committee standardized banking regulations across jurisdictions and it specially emphasized the role on the role of regulators in cross jurisdictional situations the cross jurisdictions i mean which covers different countries so basel committee has the following five groups it has five groups policy development supervision and implementation basel consultative group macro prudential supervision group and accounting experts group so all specialists are there in the committee and the first thing which it did 
was that it came out with Basel I Capital Accord in 1988. And it stated that there has to be a minimum capital requirement which has to be linked with your credit exposure. That was prescribed by this first accord. And uh, it was implemented. Enforcement started in 1992. Now, these days, the present minimum ratio of capital to risk weighted assets is 9%. And this 9% does not include capital conservation buffer. The first accord, it classified into five risk credit risk categories and uh, you were given risk rates of 0 10 20 50 and 100 percent this committee also defined core capital our capital into two parts tier one core which was core capital and tier two which was supplementary capital and market risk was included by way of an amendment which was brought into effect in 1998. This was the first accord. And why was it required? What were its goals? We are talking about Basel 2 now. Basel 1 was not covering credit risk assessment. It was not, it was uh, not covered fully. It was not risk sensitive enough. Basel 1 promoted financial decision making on the basis of regulatory constraints rather than on the basis of economic opportunities. So it did not recognize the role of credit risk mitigants. You can mitigate your credit risk with the help of different measures. And it also did not take into account the operational risks faced by the banks. So then we came out with Basel II. The objectives were that we wanted to develop a framework to strengthen the soundness and stability of the international banking, banking system. We wanted to ensure competitive equality among internationally active banks and have a consistent capital adequacy regulation. And promoting the adoption of stronger risk management practices by banks. These were the objectives of Basel II Accord. The Basel II Accord prescribed three pillars. The first pillar related to minimum capital requirements. The purpose of minimum capital requirements was to develop and expand the standardized rules which were set out in the 1988 Accord. The second pillar related to supervisory review of the institution's capital adequacy and internal assessment process. They talked about an internal capital adequacy assessment process. And the third pillar related to disclosures. They talked about effective use of disclosures to strengthen market discipline and to encourage sound banking practices. So these three pillars, they were the very foundation of the Basel II Accord. The first pillar we'll take up in detail now. It talked about minimum capital requirements. It talked about minimum capital for the credit risk you are taking, the minimum capital for you are for market risk you are taking, and minimum capital for operational risk which you are taking. So for credit risk, three approaches were prescribed. The first one was a standardized approach where you were relying on external credit ratings. And then gradually the banks were required to shift to internal ratings based approaches. 
the first one was foundation approach and the second one was advanced approach we'll be discussing these in detail later in this particular unit only the capital for market risk it had three models three systems standardized approach based on maturity maturity profile of your investments the second one was duration method standardized approach and the third one was internal models method you develop your own internal models operational risk capital was measured through three different uh, three approaches the first one was basic ind indicator approach the second is standardized approach and the final one is advanced measurement approach so this was what was prescribed under basel 2 the second pillar talked about supervisory review process which included evaluation of your risk assessment ensuring that your internal processes to assess capital adequacy are sound and they are having integrity then maintenance of minimum capital has to be ensured and wherever necessary you are supposed to prescribe differential capital this was all part of supervisory review and when you talk about the pillar 3 which relates to market discipline it talks about enhanced increased disclosure core some basic essential disclosures and supplementary disclosures and timely disclosures Disclo disclosures have to be made on time at the appropriate time after basel 2 another accord came out it was basel 3 so basel 3 it tried they tried to cover the shortcomings which were observed by banks in basel 1 and 2 so this accord is fully it has to be implemented by march 2019 this accord, it strengthened the three pillars which were established by Basel II. And it came out with certain innovations which extended the framework. It talked about capital conservation buffer. They said you must have some capital which has to be used as a buffer in case of emergencies. It would be an additional layer of common equity. Then they talked about counter cyclical capital buffer. They are saying that uh, when everything is going good, there is an economic boom, you should not use all your funds for financing. You should restrain yourself, keep some capital for your days when you will be facing difficulty. Then it talked about leverage ratios. A minimum amount of loss absorbing capital relative to all of a bank's assets and off balance sheet exposures regardless of risk weighting so you have to be properly leveraged then it came out with liquidity coverage ratio the banks must be liquid in short term for a period of say 30 days and another ratio net stable funding ratio was also introduced which talks about longer term additional proposals for systemically important banks were also introduced when we talk about systemically important banks we are talking about those banks which are too big to fail And the regulatory capital, its composition, Basel regulation state that you have to maintain a minimum pillar one capital to risk weighted assets ratio of 9% on an ongoing basis other than capital conservation buffer and counter cyclical capital buffer, etc. The computation system 
basal three capital ratios the formula is given here you have a formula for calculating common equity tier one capital ratio and it has been defined tier one capital ratio has also been defined and total capital is also defined rw stands for stands for risk weighted assets so common equity tier one capital ratio will be computed by dividing common equity tier one capital by credit risk risk weighted assets plus market risk risk weighted assets plus operational risk risk weighted assets so this is basically a mathematical exercise so we come to the next slide these are the capital requirements which have been defined by which have been laid down by rbi in line with what basel committee has stated we talk about a minimum common equity tier ratio of five and a half percent a capital conservation buffer which comprises common equity of two and a half percent a minimum common equity tier one ratio plus capital conservation buffer of eight percent that is five and a half plus two point five then additional tier one capital one and a half percent minimum tier one capital ratio one plus four should be seven percent tier two capital can be maximum two percent so minimum total capital ratio has to be nine percent and when you add capital conservation buffer to it it has to be eleven and a half percent this is what has been laid down by reserve bank so we discussed basel 1 basel 2 basel 3 so this marks the end of part 1 we'll proceed further in the next